This lecture is part of a Udemy course entitled Design of Wastewater Treatment Plants for On-Site Projects. You will learn how to fully design a treatment plant for small to medium scale projects. You can find an 80% discount promo link in the description box. Hello everyone and welcome to this new lecture that will be about the sequencing batch reactor or what is commonly known as the SBR. This technology is used to treat the wastewater and throughout this lecture we will discover the process description. So the sequencing batch reactor or the SBR it is a fill and draw activated sludge system. What we mean by the fill and draw? So the SBR it is a one tank. So all the actions are happening in one tank and in this tank we have of course to fill it with the wastewater so it fills and then we have a cycle and what is known as an SBR cycle so we have different actions that will happen in this tank and these actions include the aeration so we have here some diffusers that will aerate the wastewater and after aeration we will have uh, the formation of some flux we will then have the sedimentation also always using the same tank then we will have to draw this clear water so this is why it is called fill and draw the equalization the aeration and clarification all are achieved within one single batch reactor so one tank for all these processes the wastewater is treated in batches and for each batch a series of treatment stages are sequenced so whenever we fill this wastewater we go through the treatment processes through a full cycle of SBR then we draw the wastewater and again we fill it with a new wastewater so this is why we are saying that the wastewater is treated in batches and each batch will undergo the same treatment we use the SPR to treat mainly municipal and industrial wastewater and the SPR is mostly used for small to medium flow rates so we are talking here about small to medium scale projects it is not the ideal technology to be used for big uh, wastewater treatment plants. It is better to use different technologies. So it is mostly suited for small to medium scale projects and it can be used to treat municipal and industrial wastewater. Now let's go through the SBR uh, treatment scheme. First of all, we have the pretreatment. So of course the wastewater needs to undergo some uh, pretreatment before reaching the SBR and this pretreatment it is usually the screening so a screen to remove uh, big particles like a tree branch for example like a big stone and then the grit removal to remove sand grit also stones etc so any coarse material that can cause damage to the mechanical equipment of the treatment plant so of course I don't need a stone to enter my treatment plant because it will damage the pipes it will damage the mixers etc then the water moves to the SBR notice here that we have two SBR tanks and these tanks are working in parallel the flow is being divided into two so a certain amount will enter SBR1 and the other amount will enter SBR2. No need to have more than one SBR tank if you are dealing with a small flow or a small wastewater treatment plant. This is common in medium scale projects so of course it is better to have uh, at least two SBR tanks if we are dealing with medium flow rates. Now what is happening within these tanks? So in an SBR tank, first of all, as I have already stated previously, I have the fill step. So the first step it is to fill it with wastewater. And throughout this process, we can use 
a mixer to create some anoxic conditions, which is an ideal condition for denitrification. And also we can use some air diffusion. This is optional in the filling state also to promote treatment activity. Then the second stage, we have the aeration. So now I have filled my tank. So in the same tank and using the same diffusers, I will start to aerate my wastewater. And throughout this aeration, we will have the proliferation of some good bacteria and these bacteria will form some flocks. So I will have the formation of flocks within my wastewater. And later on in stage three, I will stop the aeration and I will let these flocks settle down. So these flocks in stage three will settle down and they will form a sludge layer. So I will have down a sludge layer and this sludge layer it is actually an activated sludge layer why it is uh, named as activated because it is full of starving bacteria so i have created an activated sludge full of good bacteria of starving bacteria that will eat the bod that will eat the organic matters and this will highly reduce my organic matters so next, in the fourth stage, I have now, what do I have? I have a sludge layer. I will use another color. So I have a sludge layer down there. I have a sludge layer. So this is the sludge layer. And I have the water, the water layer upside. So I have here the water layer. And now I will decant this water layer using a decanter. So this is the decanter. And I will decant this water into the chlorine tank. So this water now will pass or will undergo further treatment, which is the tertiary treatment for this infection. And to disinfect this water, I will use a chlorine contact tank. So we will chlorinate this water. And then this water can be safely disposed or we can use also extra treatment for wastewater reclamation or reuse. For example, we can use filtration. Now we have also a fifth step. This is an optional step. I will draw it here because I don't have space anymore. So this is the fifth step. Again, we are still in the same tank. The fifth step so now I got rid of my water. I still have the sludge, right? So this sludge, as, I, as we have already said, that this is an activated sludge. So it has the ability to treat the water. And I don't want to completely remove it. But also, of course, I don't want to endlessly have an accumulated activated sludge. So at some point, we need to remove the surplus, the surplus, uh, of the sludge and as you can see here surplus sludge we need to get rid of it and this sludge of course needs uh, further treatment before being disposed or even reused so this fifth stage it is named or called as idle stage it is mostly used um, in medium scale projects so to get rid of extra uh, sludge and also, if I have an extra wastewater flow, so uh, we, we name this as seasonal um, variability. So if I have an additional wastewater flow entering, so taking into account a fifth step will create some flexibility. So if I want to increase the time of any cycle, I am fine because I have considered a fifth cycle. So this is like a cycle to remove the extra sludge and to have some break, let's say, some extra time. So in case we need to treat more wastewater, I have this flexibility. So as a summary, 
one full cycle of SBR has five steps. So we have the fill stage where we fill the sewage, then we have the react stage to introduce oxy oxygen to the water through aeration and also mixing. We have the settling stage so that the formed flux settle down. We have the decant stage to remove the treated water for further treatment, for tertiary treatment, and the idle stage to remove the excess uh, sludge and which is also a, a small break stage. Now we will go through each and every step in details. So step one, the fill stage. So the raw wastewater or the primary effluent will enter the reactor. And this is of course after the primary treatment. The volume will of course rise within this tank. So the le liquid level will increase from 75 to 100% of the total capacity of the tank. We have the optional mixing stage. So if we want, we can include a mixer and this mechanical mixer will enhance the settling and also it will create the anoxic conditions. So if I want to get rid of the nitrogen in my water, I have to use the stage which is the denitrification. So this is the anoxic stage. Then we have the nitrification and the following stage and the aeration stage to be able to remove the nitrogen in the water. We can also use aeration to promote biological reactions also within the wastewater. Next, we have the react. And as I have already said that we need here blowers and air diffusers. So I need a mechanical blower that will diffuse air through these diffusers within the wastewater. And this process will create flux that will later on settle down by gravity and will create the sludge layer that will help to reduce the BOD, the COD and the organic matters within my wastewater. So the purpose it is to create a biomass. So the sludge layer that will break down the organic matter and this will cause the high reduction of BOT. The conditions that I need to create aeration only. So we need aeration and this will support also the nitrification. So again, we said that if we include before a mixer in the filling stage, I will create anoxic condition. And then during the react stage, I will promote nitrification and this will highly reduce nitrogen. So again, the cyclic aeration and mixing will enable nitrification and denitrification for nitrogen removal. This is what I have already explained. Now the third step, which is the settling step. So here the formed flux will settle down by gravity. Of course, here I need to stop any mixing. I need to stop the aeration. I need to create a calm condition so that these flux settle down calmly. So under calm conditions, and the result will be a clarified supernatant water that will form on the top and it will be ready for discharge. So no mixing or aeration during this phase. Next, the decant phase. So in this phase, we will remove the clarified effluent after the settling and we will be using a floating or adjustable ware. So a decanter that will do the job. And the goal it is to discharge the treated water without disturbing settled sludge. So again, calmly without moving the water, we need to move this clear water into further treatment, the chlorination. Fifth, the idle stage, which is an optional stage for medium scale projects. It will accommodate variations and in influent flow. It will allow the sludge wasting. So the removal of excess biomass, it will also provide operational flexibility between cycles and enables equalization if inflow is intermittent. As a summary, so we have here the five steps. The first step, the feed step, it will take 33% of the total time. The purpose, it is the substrate input, so to welcome 
the incoming wastewater to fill the incoming wastewater and the, the denitrification through mixing. For aeration, we can use aeration or not. It is optional. Step two, the reaction. It takes also another 33% of the time. The purpose, it is the carbon removal, so the BOD, the COD, and also the nitrification. And yes, we need here aeration. The settling takes 16% of the time and it is used for clarification, so sedimentation and of course without aeration. Decant 14% of the time to remove the treated water and move it to the tertiary treatment, no aeration. The idle 4% of the time, excess sludge removal and also without aeration. For the performance, the SPR, it is a good option to treat the wastewater. We can expect a BOD removal of 85 to 95%, also high reduction of COD, 80 to 90%. We have also nitrogen removal, 70 to 90% if we are doing the right techniques. So if we are using denitrification in the fill stage and nitrification and the aeration, aeration stage, and also we can expect a phosphorus removal of 60 to 85 percent. So these are good numbers and the SPR is actually a very effective method if it is well designed. The applications where we use the SBR, it is used for municipal wastewater treatment. Of course, it is suitable for small to medium scale communities. It can handle variable flow load and also it enables nutrient removal. It is also used in industries. It is ideal for batch or variable discharge industries, common in food, textile, pharma, petrochemical wastewaters. And also it is used in remote or decentralized sites. So remote, remote villages and villages that do not have access to centralized Wastewater, we can use the SPR as a DWAT or a decentralized wastewater treatment system. It is used for camps, ecology, offshore setups. It actually has a low footprint, so it requires a smaller space compared to other technologies and minimal operator needs. The advantages, space efficient. So I have many stages that are happening in only one reactor. So I have the equalization, the aeration and the clarification all in one tank. So this of course will save space and cost, especially when compared to the traditional activated sludge process. Also flexible operation. It can be adjusted for varying flows and loads. So it is ideal for seasonal or fluctuating loads. I have already explained this. Good effluent quality. So also as we have already mentioned, efficient removal of BOD, nitrogen and phosphorus with proper control. Also I, we have low sludge production. This is also a very important feature. Longer sludge age allows better stabilization. The disadvantages, we have a complex control systems. So it requires timers, sensors, good automation. So we have a higher setup cost and skilled operators. So it needs somehow a high capex and opex. Not ideal for large scale plants. So we need more efficient systems in case we are dealing with big wastewater treatment plants. Mechanical failure risk, since it has many mechanical equipment, so, so it relies heavily on valves, pumps, and automation, and so these can break, they need maintenance, etc. And we have the failure risk that can affect treatment and also cycle timing sensitivity. If we have poor cycle timing or disturbances, this can compromise the effluent quality.